transition. How long does the Prime Minister expect the war in Iraq to last? The right honourable Prime Minister. Order. The right honourable Prime Minister is rising to answer the question. Order. Order. The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I don't think it's uh, really the power of the Prime Minister of Canada to determine how long uh, international events will take place or not take place. What I will say, Mr. Speaker, is the establishment, as I've said repeatedly before, of an Islamic caliphate that is beheading children, selling women as slaves, committing acts of genocide against minorities and captured POWs, and that is planning security attacks on this country, Mr. Speaker. This is not acceptable. And the government will act, and will act with our allies to make sure those capacities are degraded in a way that they will not continue to be a threat to this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Si le Premier ministre croit réellement qu'il s'agit d'un danger immédiat pour le Canada, pourquoi alors il n'envoie qu'une poignée d'avions et quelques dizaines de militaires pour conseiller pourquoi il envoie pour, pas beaucoup plus de monde s'il croit vraiment ce qu'il vient de nous dire ici aujourd'hui. Alors, Monsieur le Président, maintenant le gouvernement agit, agit d'une façon trop, trop, euh, trop euh, lent et trop petit. Monsieur le Président, le, la position de l'NDP change avec chaque question. Monsieur le Speaker, le gouvernement est carefully considering ses actions. It's uh, the, the, obviously the ability we have before us, our capacities to contribute. We'll con carefully consider these things if they require a vote. In Parliament, we will do that, Mr. Speaker, but we will make sure we carefully undertake our actions and take the actions that are in the best interest of the Canadian people and according to our international responsibility. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. The Canadians need to have an idea of the time of this engagement. So, let's be even more clear. La mission originale devait durer 30 jours. Le Premier ministre contemple l'escalade de l'engagement canadien. Le ministre des Affaires étrangères parle maintenant d'un engagement de longue durée. Alors, pour combien de temps les soldats canadiens seront-ils déployés en Irak? Les, les Américains y étaient pendant plus de 10 ans. Nous, on était en Afghanistan pour 11 ans avec 40 000 militaires. Combien de temps la guerre du Premier ministre en Irak? Monsieur le Président, je voudrais euh, corriger euh, cette déclaration. Euh, C'est une action à la part du Président Obama et nos alliés. Monsieur le Président, c'est une action undertaken by, at the initiative of President Obama, involving not just our allies, but a broad uh, consensus of the international community. It's a very serious matter, Mr. Speaker. We cannot go out and start throwing around uh, timelines that we're not aware of. We simply have to examine what's in front of us, what we can do. We will come to the House of Commons with a proposal on that matter, Mr. Speaker, and I look forward to a debate and vote on that. Speaker, how is victory to be defined in Iraq? The right Uh, once again, Mr. Speaker, let me uh, just lay out how we see the situation, and I think it's uh, widely understood. We have at the present time the establishment of a quasi-state, an Islamic caliphate, stretching from Aleppo almost to Baghdad. Mr. Speaker, uh, up until very recently, operating entirely in the open, planning attacks, not just genocide against large populations in the region, but planning attacks against this country. Mr. Speaker, we will work with our allies on a counterterrorism operation to get us to the point where, there are, where, where this organization does not have the capacity to launch those kinds of attacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the government's exit strategy in Iraq? Mr. Speaker, um, obviously the government could, uh, could uh, terminate uh, present deployments at any moment. Uh, we obviously have not done that. We're looking at next steps. We will obviously uh, look carefully at, step at steps 
uh, that we believe would not uh, leave us there in a quagmire for years. That's something all governments are going to avoid. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Depuis quand le Premier ministre envisage-t-il des frappes aériennes en Irak? Depuis quand? Were airstrikes included in the letter that the Prime Minister says he received from the United States last week? Mr. Speaker, the um, United States and our other allies have taken a range of actions in uh, Iraq and Syria. It is well known what all of those are. Obviously, uh, they're uh, seeking our assistance uh, wherever we could be helpful, and we're obviously examining uh, what those options, what options are most appropriate for this country. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Canadians first learned about this letter from an interview that the Prime Minister did with the Wall Street Journal last week. Is the Prime Minister going to make that letter public, yes or no? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the, the government will make public its own decisions. Ultimately, while we act with our American and other allies, uh, this country is responsible for its own decisions, its own actions, and, Mr. Speaker, those are the things we will put to this Parliament to debate. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Quelles sont les règles d'engagement pour les soldats canadiens présentement en Irak? Les règles sont très claires, Monsieur le Président. Ils sont là pour conseiller et pour, et pour assister les forces, les forces irakiennes dans le nord du pays. Voilà. Monsieur le Président, le Premier ministre dit que les règles d'engagement sont de conseiller et d'assister, mais la question est de savoir assister. Comment? Par exemple, est-ce que les soldats canadiens participent à des patrouilles irakiennes ou kurdes en ce moment? Monsieur le Président, je dis conseiller uh, assister. If I can just, uh, Mr. Speaker, use the terminology in English, it's uh, quite precise. It's to advise, to assist. It is not to accompany, and I think that was laid out before the parliamentary committee. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Est-ce qu'ils font des sorties en zone de combat? Monsieur le Président, je viens de dire euh, que les soldats can canadiens n'accompagnent pas euh, des forces irakiennes dans leur combat. Bravo! Madame le chef de l'opposition. Have Canadian forces assisted in targeting ISIS troops? The right honorable Prime Minister. Once again, uh, Mr. Speaker, as I've said, the purpose of uh, Canadian forces in Iraq is to assist, uh, is to assist and to advise the Iraqi forces. As Mr. Speaker, they have been resisting, particularly in the north, a force uh, bent on the genocide of the people who live there. Mr. Speaker, this is the, these are the actions they're undertaking. Uh, well, there is some risk. There is not a direct combat role, but Mr. Speaker. I say once again, we're very proud of people who do this work on our behalf and keep all of us, not just in that part of the world, but all of the Is targeting or coordinating attacks by others a combat role, yes or no? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, if you can understand, I'm not uh, neither Neither, neither have the will nor the uh, desire to get into detailed discussions of uh, military operations here. As I've said repeatedly, Mr. Speaker, uh, the Canadian forces involved in Iraq are not involved in combat, Mr. Speaker. They are there to assist Iraqi and Peshmerga forces who are undertaking combat against uh, a brutal enemy that is intent on their slaughter, Mr. Speaker, and we will go there and we will assist them and make sure we stop that kind of problem there and not at our own shores. Mr. Speaker, recently the RCMP announced that they had decided to discontinue their use of the iconic